In the last video, I talked about helpful insects that keep pests away from our plants. Today, I'll discuss plants or flowers that attract these insects by offering plenty of nectar and pollen. Nectar is food for them and pollen helps plants reproduce. However, some flowers don't have nectar or pollen, so I'll focus on plants that offer both. Planting a mix of these plants in your garden can make it a diverse and inviting home for predatory insects and other helpful pollinators. Here are some perennial plants known for having lots of nectar and pollen. Lavender flowers are small, fragrant blooms that grow in clusters on long stems. They are tubular in shape and come in shades of purple, sometimes with hints of blue or pink, and are complemented by gray-green leaves. Apart from their beauty and scent, lavender flowers attract pollinators and beneficial insects like bees, butterflies, ladybugs, lacewings, and hoverflies with their plentiful and sweet nectar. This helps in pollination as insects transfer pollen while feeding. It also keeps the insects active and provides essential nutrients, supporting their colonies. Lavender blooms for months, offering a steady food source for these insects. Lavender thrives in sunny spots with good drainage, usually in zones 5 to 9. Lavender plants usually stands between 12 to 24 inches tall and spread 12 to 36 inches wide. But their size can differ depending on the variety, growing conditions, and pruning. Coneflower, also known as Echinacea, thrive throughout North America in various climates and soils. They feature daisy-like flowers with raised cone-shaped centers surrounded by colorful petals. These petals come in shades of pink, purple, white, and orange, and they bloom from summer to fall. These plants are low-maintenance and adaptable, thriving in sunny spots with well-draining soil. Once established, they can withstand drought and repel pests and diseases. Coneflowers are suitable for gardening zones 3 to 9, typically growing 1 to 3 feet tall and spreading 1 to 2 feet wide. Coneflowers attract beneficial insects like bees, butterflies, and hoverflies to the garden with their nectar-rich flowers. Their ease of care and pest resistance make them an excellent addition to any garden. Bee balm, also known as monarda, is a plant native to North America known for its tall stems and colorful tubular flowers. These flowers come in shades of red, pink, purple, and white, attracting a variety of pollinators and beneficial insects like bees, butterflies, ladybugs, hoverflies, ground beetles, and soldier beetles. They also draw hummingbirds with their sweet nectar. Bee balm typically grows 2 to 4 feet tall and spreads 1 to 3 feet wide. Although some cultivars may vary in size, it thrives in moist, well-drained soil and prefers full sun to partial shade. Commonly found in gardens, borders, and natural areas, it is suitable for gardening zones 4 to 9. While bee balm is generally resistant to pests and diseases, it can develop powdery mildew, especially in humid conditions. Proper air circulation and spacing between plants can help prevent this fungal disease. Black-eyed Susans, also known as Rebecca, are vibrant perennials native to North America. They have bright yellow or orange petals circling a dark brown, almost black, central disc, giving them their distinctive black eye appearance. The petals are shaped like daisies with a slightly rounded or pointed tip and a textured surface. 
They bloom from the mid of summer to fall. These plants usually grow between 1 to 3 feet tall and spread 1 to 2 feet wide. They do best in full sun and well-drained soil but can adapt to various conditions. Known for their hardiness, they're a popular choice for low-maintenance gardens. Black-eyed Susans are hardy in gardening zones 3 to 9, attracting beneficial insects like bees, butterflies, hoverflies, ladybugs, lacewings, and soldier beetles. While they resist most pests and diseases, they may suffer from powdery mildew in humid climates. Good airflow and spacing can prevent this issue. Also, dividing clumps every few years keeps the plants healthy. Sage, also called salvia, is a useful herb cherished for its fragrant leaves and lovely flowers. These flowers grow together in bunches of slim stems and come in range of colors like blue, purple, pink, and white. Sage plants can be different sizes but usually grow to about 1 to 3 feet tall and spread about 1 to 2 feet wide. They prefer sunny locations with well-drained soil and are commonly found in gardens and herb gardens worldwide, thriving in zones 4 to 9 depending on the variety. Sage attracts beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and hoverflies to the garden because of its flowers rich in nectar which helps with pollination. While sage is usually tough against pests and diseases, it can sometimes deal with issues like aphids, spider mites, and powdery, powdery mildew. Giving it the right amount of water and making sure there's enough space between plants can help stop these problems. The butterfly bush, also known as Budlia davidii, is a favorite shrub known for its fragrant flowers that attract butterflies and other pollinators. Its small, tubular flowers are tightly packed in clusters and come in many colors like purple, pink, white, red, and various shades in between. Some cultivars even feature bicolored flowers or variegated foliage. These bushes typically grow 6 to 12 feet tall with curved branches and long, narrow leaves. They can also spread equally wide. There are compact varieties available that stay smaller, reaching around 3 to 5 feet in height and width. They thrive in full sun and well-drained soil and are adaptable to different soil types but prefer fertile, slightly alkaline soil. They are hardy in zones 5 through 9. In addition to butterflies, butterfly bushes attract a variety of beneficial insects including bees, ladybugs, hoverflies, assassin bugs, praying mantises, predatory wasps, and ground beetle. It also attracts hummingbirds. The nectar-rich flowers provide an important food source for these creatures. While generally disease resistant, it can sometimes be affected by powdery mildew. Pruning in late winter or early spring promotes continuous flowering and regular watering helps, although established plants are drought tolerant. Mulching helps retain moisture and suppress weeds. Despite its uh, popularity, it's important to be cautious of its potential invasiveness in some regions. Butterfly bushes are usually tender perennials, but I have one in my yard in Winnipeg which is in Zone 3 that's been growing strong for almost 10 years now without any special winter protect protection. I moved it to a more open spot in my garden in 2022 thinking it might not make it but to my surprise, it survived and even flowered last year. I had the pleasure of watching this hummingbird flutter around my garden last year and I thought I'd share it with all of you to enjoy. Hummingbirds are tiny, 
colorful birds found in the Americas, known for hovering in the air and making a humming sound with their wings. They're about 3 to 5 inches long, with shiny feathers in vibrant colors. They feed on flower nectar with their long bills and tongues, and eat insects too. Hummingbirds can hover, fly backward, and upside down. Typically, they live for 3 to 5 years in the wild. Hummingbirds play a vital role in pollination and are admired by birdwatchers worldwide. Please stay tuned for more plants that attract beneficial insects to our garden in part 2 of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, like, and feel free to share this video with your friends. Your comments would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to click the notification bell to stay updated for new videos. Again, thank you, and see you next time! Happy gardening!